Today I'm in the heart of the Banuk Valley, witnessing the making of a proudly South African product called Banuk Chili Oil. Let's take a look. Tell me more about your background. Why chili oil? Yeah, in actual fact, I just stumbled upon it. Um, so I had, I had a 30 year career in finance and um, I only recently just retired from it um, at the end of 2019 to focus solely on, on Banuk chili oil. But um, it all really started about 25 years ago when I lived in Paris, in France. And whenever you got a pizza takeaway, it would come with a sauce piquant, which is basically chili oil in these little sachets. Mm. And, uh, and I loved it. It's really, it's, it's the perfect blend of heat and flavor. It's not too hot, uh, but just gives a nice bite, a nice heat in your mouth when you're eating that pizza. Mm. And, uh, but the weirdest thing is you can't buy it in a shop. There's no, call it a Tabasco of, of chili oil whether it's in France or the UK and trust me I've looked everywhere all around the, all around <laughs> the world to try and find it so I then moved from Paris to the UK and same story um, the only place that you can really get it is if you go into an Italian restaurant and then they bring some fresh chilies or something like that with a bit of olive oil yeah, we have that here so in South yeah exactly well. the same over here so it's all very frustrating but then about four years ago I was back in France and uh, I went to a pizzeria and I found these sachets on the table. So in any case, I went and I nicked a few of them and put it in my pocket, came back, and then my brother-in-law, AD, uh, he's a real foodie. And one Sunday lunch, he was, uh, he was looking at me with putting my chili oil onto, the, uh, uh, onto my food, and he was like, but I can make that. So I was like, what, really? So he said, yeah. So in any case, we, we started experimenting. We used um, olive oil, we used all different types of oils, uh, all different types of chilies, different strengths, different um, combinations, etc. And uh, after about 60 different uh, um, tests, we actually came up with what you see in, in the bottle today. So please explain to me the entire manufacturing process, beginning to end. Um, I think the base is going to be if we just take it from start to finish. So let's start with the chilies, most important. Okay. So here we've got our beautiful dried Thai chilies. Can I touch them? You may. With my bare hands? You may, you may. Wow, look at that. Okay. So here wow. we... Yeah, we crush them into the perfect um, consistency. Then we weigh them into packets. Mm -hmm. Each packet goes into a pot, which you'll see now. Um, open it up for you. That's what they look like when they've been chopped. Okay. There we go. So this. This is the magic and the basis for that beautiful product that we've put out. And mm -hmm. that there's nothing. Okay, and then this is my feature lab where the experiments and the, everything happens. So, yeah, just a nice, nice workspace. <laughs> so this is where the scientist gets it all together. What are these? So we're just testing different um, different variations there. We're looking at, at different colors, etc, etc. Okay, so let's go down to production. As you can see, cooking, filtering, bottling and capping. Mm. All happens here. Mm. Closed environment. So, uh, because we're not in production, we won't bother you with a hand. Do you mean, but I can, I can do it. 
just for the fun of it. <laughs> so our oil gets pumped through from the back through, through these nice shiny pipes into the pots. Work the magic here. The chilies get drained, most of the chilies get drained off. Yeah. We drain the oil into that big tank over there. We filter from there into here. This is our clean oil tank. And the clean oil then gets um, sent through to the filler, the bottle filling and the capping. After it's been capped, passes through the hatch into labeling and once it's labeled it goes back down to dispatch. So this hatch, obviously that also helps just to keep this entire space sterilized. Correct. So, we, so it's basically a, um, a contained zone. So everything that happens with, with open bottles stays here. So, so nothing comes in or goes out that's open. So, so, the, so the oil's in that sealed pipe that comes in mm -hmm. and the bottle is capped by the time it goes out. So, so this is the sterile, um, the sterile zone. Okay, so yeah. you and Alex this morning mm. and this is, what, this is how we receive the chilies. So these are all with those ch chilies that we saw earlier in the bucket. Yeah. This is how they come. And these are our dried whole chilies and then we store them here before we take them down for processing. I'm Rochelle. I'm the accountant, so I basically do all the accounting for, uh, which includes for SA, US and the UK. So it's quite a big distribution field that you've got to have. Right? Yeah. We are living in very difficult and different circumstances and it is volatile. Yeah, our current set of affairs in this country. What makes you get up in the morning and just come to work? Sure, I think <laughs> I'm in a very lucky pos position. Um, there's a lot of people that doesn't work and is looking for work and yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> since last year, the start of the, the lockdown, we are work, we're all working. So, so I think I'm in a very lucky position and I'm thankful for that. So I keep, kept on working, earn the salary, most of the other people doesn't have that. So yeah. I find that this is definitely this, a business with a heart, not just for the product, but for the people who work here. Yeah. And it's really great to know that you also love coming to work. Yes, yes, yeah. I definitely do. It's a lovely place to work for. And yes, <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> Hi, you Mora. Tell me, how is it that you're working here at Vanekwa? Oh, okay. Um, I started with them at the beginning while I was working for Ken, um, mother-in-law, in his garden. And then later Ken employed me permanently to work for him. And at that stage, that when he started the tele oil and he immediately made me the tele oil man. Fantastic. So he's given you all the training that you need to do what you know now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Basically, most of the training happened on the job. Okay. We all started with it and I was sent these certain courses. Can you tell me more about your different responsibilities here at Bunning Tele Oil? Oh, okay. Basically, from, from Eddie, after cooking Eddie, after that, it almost becomes my baby. I have to make sure that I filter, um, help the guys, check the guys' labeling, everything until it leaves the factory. You told me earlier that you use canola oil. Yes. So the problem with, we started, we wanted to use olive oil, and, but the problem with that is, first of all, the, the olive taste gets in the way of these chilies. These mm. chilies are very flavorsome and uh, the olive gets in, in the way of it. And then it also depends on which type of olive oil that you use, because there's so many different uh, types mm. out there. So we wanted something that was more of a neutral carrier so that we can taste the chili. That was the real key in, yeah. in it all. 
So that's why, we're, in essence, you only have two choices then, and that's sunflower oil and canola oil. And uh, we chose canola because it's the healthiest of all oils. It's only got 7% saturated fats, whereas mm -hmm. olive oil's got 15, sunflower 12. Yeah. So, uh, so it's naturally healthy for you as well, and the neutral carrier. So double whammy for us, <laughs> yeah. Around us, is this going to be a deli? Is it a bistro? What are your vision? What's your vision for the future where we are here? Well, we start off with obviously it's the factory is, is the, um, the most important, but then we thought, you know what? A lot of people don't know uh, how do you use a chili oil. They know about a sauce, chili sauce, like a Tabasco or whatever it might be, but not a chili oil. And uh, so we thought, well, why don't we have a little tasting room? We're in the middle of the winelands, so just like you go to a wine farm and you go and you taste their wines, we thought, well, why not have a tasting room over here? So we thought, well, how do you chase, uh, taste chili oil? And uh, the only real way that you can do it is with food, combinations of food. So we started with a pizza oven, uh, critical. And, uh, and we're just gonna have a whole lot of foods over here that basically are dishes that go with, with chili oil. So this becomes a tasting room? Correct. Uh, it's called, in actual fact, I think we're gonna call it the taste kitchen. So that's the, the name for the restaurant, or not restaurant, but the tasting room at the yeah. moment. Obviously, for, for a restaurant, you need many other legal, like the legalities behind it is difficult. But a tasting room, I assume, is easier. It is easier, um, and, um, and because it also promotes tourism, etc. So here in the Western Cape, they really like these, these types of, uh, of businesses in the area. And I also saw when I was walking down, you call this lane where you can view everything from, from the outside. Yes, the experience walkway. The experience so we, walkway. Yeah, we had to put something in for wheelchair access. So we thought, well, why, why not, instead of it just being used, I don't know, a couple of times a year, let's make it something special yes. as well. So that's the, that you walk down the experience walkway, and then you can look into each window, uh, which, which shows each stage of the process of us making the chili oil. I think that's really special, because it just shows you everything, and you're not hiding anything. And that, in this day and age, is like admirable. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a, it's a key for us, and that is transparency is, is critical. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we, uh, uh, one of our key employee uh, um, values is integrity as well. So, uh, so it was important for us to have everything out in the open and no, no, not hiding anything. <laughs> and obviously here, yeah, we don't have any wind, so you can sit here 24 seven, straight through the air and enjoy beautiful surroundings. Of yeah, I mean, that's, that's just the benefit as well. I mean, it's a, it's a nice side benefit to have. So, in South Africa, you've got a foothold. It's great. Things are going well. Tell me about the rest of the world and the distribution of your oil. So, when I started this full-time at the beginning of last year, so January 2020, we put together a 10-year plan. So, we've got everything mapped out to 2030 already yeah so obviously the the market here in in south africa for premium oil is quite small the the the, the reach that we can get to so we thought okay well let's also go um, internationally as as well and uh, so the starting point was in actual fact to go to all the english-speaking countries around the world uh, as well as the uh, uh, the middle east and the reason for that is there are strong South African expat communities mm. in all the English-speaking countries around the world. So the low-hanging fruit, or to get a, a foothold in those markets, this would be a good starting point. And also the South Africans, I mean, they're in all different walks of life and industries in those um, countries. So maybe, you know, someone will be working for a big um, a retail chain or something like that, and maybe then mention to the owners, why don't you uh, stock this oil? I mean, it's a, you know, it's a great product and et cetera, Proudly et cetera. South Here we go, proudly South Africa. So, uh, so that's our starting point and, um, it, and, and that we want to complete by the end of this year. We wanted to complete it last year, but unfortunately with lockdown and COVID and et cetera, it's, it's slowing things up a little bit. Um, but we should have it all uh, be in every single English speaking country um, by the end of this year. We're already in New Zealand. Our shipment arrived there about a month ago. So, and that's the furthest English speaking country yeah. uh, from us. We're already in the States. We're already in uh, the UK as well. 
The nice thing is we've had uh, some people from Holland in actual fact contact us. They want to distribute our product. The same with Germany as well. Is it hard when you've got to distribute and there's all different rules and regulations by which you had to abide by? Surely I think that's why you did what you do here. Everything is in place. I mean, this it runs on wheels. Um, and I'm sure when you start distributing, they have all these different laws by which you have to buy. And obviously that is why you also do what you do on this side, so that you can distribute there. Do you find it difficult or, or is everything in place with regards to manufacturing the oil here? Yeah, I think, it, look, there's, there's always a bit of a learning curve with anything. I mean, the one advantage of all the English speaking countries is that uh, most of the time, for example, label requirements, etc., are all pretty much standard and it's all in one language. You don't have to worry about it. So that's why we do appreciate it when a German distributor comes to us and says we need a German label and they then do the translation of that label for the local market and that. So you're right. Uh, and the like product anything itself? New, the, the oil itself? No, that's, that's standard. That stays the same uh, for, for everyone. Okay. Yeah, the whole world. I just saw what you're doing there and it's amazing, step by step and, and I think this is a, a, a super premium product just by looking from the outside what it is that you're doing here. Yeah, but that's wow. definitely the, the business plan um, mm. for it. You know, we want to build the brand, uh, the global brand for Chili Well mm. and uh, that's why it's one product only and we don't want to be distracted with any other different products or anything yeah. like that. One product and uh, that's it. That's how we're going to build the global brand. So Crystal, as a business, there are certain rules and regulations that you have to buy by to export your product. Tell me more about that. Um, so yes, we do need certification. Um, for exporting, especially um, to other countries. We just got certified for our FSSC 22000 certification, which means we comply to regulations for international standards. Um, so we're very proud of that and very happy to be at that point. So that opens a lot of doors for us in the international market.